Well, the good news is I don't have that many slides as last time. I wish I had more time from the previous, but I'll show you a few more pictures. I have about 12 slides. Um, we really didn't have an initiative. Um, I think individual people had initiatives. So uh, what I'd like to do is just recognize the folks from North Carolina here at the meeting. So if you could, from North Carolina, please stand up. Bill, Pickens, Barry New, Beth, Dakota, Sarah. I don't think David's here, but our success story is our people, really. The commitment to professional development, um, to keep an open mind and learn new things. So for my success story, it's a play on words. It's partnerships matter. Uh, we've been fortunate to at least leverage uh, grant money that was out there, seed money. Barry was, was with us and Bill early on 2009. We had a grant in 2010. Competitive grant, redesign, they've changed it. It's laser landscape scale restoration. But we were fortunate to have some seed money, like Mike said, startup money to incubate kind of the effort. We knew people were out there interested. So Mike mentioned the partnership with Oklahoma, Arkansas, North Carolina, and Texas. Uh, so that money really launched us to think about, let's get more people together, talk short leaf, see what we can do, generate momentum. Like Mike said, the Raleigh Workshop was an organic thing that just really word of mouth and we had just great attendance. People really wanted to try to do something. Uh, the other thing with George's, uh, how can I put it politely, George? He kicked us in the butt to really get things moving and see some results and stay after it. Uh, we were able to form a partnership with Southern Regional Extension Forestry and provide the framework, really. We started with a decision support system, but really we just, we needed something, a web portal, some resources to get people where Shortleaf was at one place and they could find resources and learn more about it. We had a workshop in 2015 with the Greater Uwari Conservation Partnership. Mike was there, great field trips, U.S. Forest Service. We had well over 80 to 100 people and we also surveyed the participants about what they knew before and what they knew afterwards and we were surprised at the topic area they came away learning their, their knowledge level was increased from that meeting so that was a success that we were able to gauge um, how successful we were. Um, I see the North Atlantic Fire Science Exchange banner there so you know that's a partnership that uh, the feds put on a meeting uh, about restoring shortleaf pine in Southern Appalachians uh, with the consortium of the fire managers, scientists talking about fire, its role in shortleaf, and using that to sell uh, prescribed burning. Uh, we partner with field trips. People want to see on the ground stuff, what it looks like, what's all involved, how did you do this, I like this, I want to try it. So to me that's key really, the partnership that you can go network, talk to people one-on-one -on -one in the field. Uh, the last one uh, we have a proposal in, Barry is, was the lead with engaging landowners in management of fire maintained pine forest. You know, we've done a good job, Smoky Bear, keeping fire out of the woods, but is it time to have dialogue about what is the place of fire in our forest? And state agencies have done a good job, I think. So we need that dialogue that can be beneficial as well to landowners. So we have a competitive grant. If Ken was here, we, hopefully have good consideration with it and that'll be a partnership with other states. Again back to the original this has been our kind of uh, best best partnership which is US Forest Service. Some states they don't have that relationship it's a disdain for personnel with the feds. We don't take that approach we view them as a productive positive partner. We need them. Uh, we want them. We want them to be engaged so we decided to spend our efforts technical on keeping up uh, nursery, tree improvement. We've lost a lot of capacity in the southern states, so it's important to our agency to maintain that capacity however we can. The funding levels have just been shifted elsewhere. We need to have that dialogue to bring some of that money back to support some of our nurseries and our capacity for restoration and having state agencies partner to be able to at least make that effort, sustain it. So I want to highlight a short leaf seed collection effort we did in 2016. Little history about the Beach Creek Seed Orchard and why it's important, why our efforts are important. 
Um, the seed production at Beach Creek has declined greatly over the years for several reasons. You know, its age, disease, southern pine, pine beetle ran through in the early two, 2000s, uh, so we've lost some trees. But think about this is when those graphs originally started, it was the late 50s, you know, early 60s, they collected sign wood from these selections. They were already old. There were already good selections in the woods. So when they grafted them, that makes some of the families at Beach Creek about, you know, 95 to 100 years old. So it's not old for a natural stand and restoration, but for a production capacity seed, it, it is old. So it's well past its prime for good seed production. Keep in mind, you know, how often shortleaf pine produces a good seed crop every five to seven years. Um, briefly about the DNA fingerprinting. Um, Dana, I don't know if you were involved, um, but, you know, they looked at seed, they sampled some seed at the various nurseries and found there was a small percentage, maybe less than 2%. They sampled some of the orchard trees at some of the orchards in Arkansas and Louisiana, and they found some hybridization in the southern orchards, but the good news is the ones at Beach Creek is, I don't think they found anything, did they, Dana? So that gives us great hope, really, that the selections that we made early on and the new selections are true shortleaf pines. They're true superior trees. So that was very favorable, I think, uh, from an agency standpoint. Here's some pictures I want to show you. Uh, the tree, in the, he's planting the new one. We did two rounds of planting on the grafted stock in 2013 and 2016. This is the winter, December. Uh, but what you can see is this was from the earlier talk. These were the grafts from 2013. and Really, this past year, we actually found some seed on some of those early grafts, so that was really exciting. And those of you that worked in nursery or grafting is sometimes there's a lot of incompatibility in these older material and grafting success. So that's why it was important to do it, not just one year, but a couple years to ensure that these families can be continued on. Here's the future. Here's what it looks like, man. Doesn't look like much, but this kind of excites me, really. It really does when you think about it. Um, this is the, the new orchard at Shortleaf going in at Beach Creek with, again, the original good families. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So, And they've used some tublings here to try to protect them and get them up uh, of age. Um, a lot of good people have laid the foundation that they'll be gone by the time that significant seed is produced. Many of us in this room will be retired, um, but at least we'll be leaving a legacy, and that's the way I look at it. So um, here's a couple pictures from ours. Um, this was the 13 graft. Uh, we called ours the Ken Roeder, second generation shortleaf orchard. The site's not as great, so we're looking at how we can upgrade it or perhaps move it to a more suitable location. Uh, we're still looking for ways to improve it, but uh, the Beach Creek one, we've been really satisfied and happy about how it looks. This is kind of what it looks like. If you've never been there, I encourage you to take a trip, a tour, of where your seed source comes from. Uh, within the Southern Appalachian, it has a wide range of sources. These are the parent trees, so you can see um, not quite ebony and ivory, but this is a federal bucket truck. And this past year, we leveraged some of our program money to rent bucket trucks, provide personnel to help collect seed this year from the orchard. Uh, and this is a challenge. You know, look how tall these trees are. The seed are all the way at the top. You couldn't pay me to get up in that bucket truck, okay? I've batted a few out in my career for sure, but uh, no way. Um, give you a highlight about the, um, at Beach Creek. The last good shortly pine cone crop occurred in about 2009. And this was the production, about 200 bushels. You can see how many pounds per seed per bushel, excellent seed year. On average, you know, it's about 0 0.40 or less pounds per seed per bushel. So look at 2016 collection. We collected about 120 bushels of cones, netting about 32 pounds and 0.27 pounds of seed per bushel. So you can see just a gradual decline in the production rate and why it's really important, our efforts to try to reestablish um, some new sources and new production. It's just declining over the years. We had the seed tested. Um, you can see the results here. An important facility is the National Seed Laboratory. Provide a great service to us as far as, you know, how much they're viable, 
they gave us a seed count. So if you take the seed count, the viability, based on our 2016 collection, it netted about 1.25 million seed. Uh, we share that seed collection with the U.S. Forest Service, uh, but for the most part, we keep it for um, our production. Uh, looking at what we grow, we still maintain a capacity in shortleaf pine. We've increased it over the years. Last two years, it's averaged about 350 to 400,000 uh, seedlings grown. Um, is Ben still here? Um, we have moved also containerized is making up the majority of that production. Uh, and there's various reasons for that. The bare root sales have been declining in preference. People have planted containerized long leaf. They, they've gotten good results. They like being able to handle them or easier to plant. There's lots of reasons, but for us as an agency and a nursery is the seed efficiency. Uh, what we get out of the seed, we get more containers, more, more seedlings versus bare root losing production. So uh, it's really a cost benefit decision for nursery managers and tree planters as well. So I can't make that decision, but you can with a discussion with your landowners as far as the cost versus the benefits. So for us, bare root 65 per thousand, containerized is 156. Uh, but if it results in good survival and you have money in the front end on site prep, it's probably worth that investment. The seedling is probably the lowest cost part of your investment when you think about it. So why not put some good stock out there to be more successful? I'm gonna disagree with my colleague, uh, Mr. Jim out there. Uh, the western part of the range had this bumper massive seed crop year, bigger orchard, so they netted a huge supply that they could bank. It lasts a long time, but you know, for us in the east, in our nursery, uh, what we're producing, 350 to 400,000, uh, the demand is really outpacing the seed storage capacity in North Carolina seedling production. So again, 1.25 million doesn't take you long that four or five years we're already through that that last collection. So hopefully in time the orchards will catch up and we'll be able to build up that stock. Um, so that's a good problem to have I think Mike is when we're seeing the demand to increase and you know for our agency we planted the most shortleaf pine on private land acres this past year. Um, so just to summarize why we've kind of been successful um, you know, and some other things is I think production from the new seed orchard is about 10 or 15 years away. I'm trying to be optimistic, not to say you won't get seed in another five or 10 years, but for large quantities available, it, it's going to be some time away. That's why it was important to get started early uh, and take advantage of all the effort that was done previously. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, we continue to look for new sources of material, partners and projects. We continue to promote outreach opportunities in North Carolina for more shortleaf pine management on state and private lands. We take them one landowner at a time. So we size them up and we look for ones that are the right landowner that have opportunity and work with them. Uh, we also been partnering with state parks. Um, U.S. Forest Service has done a good job of restoration, converting some of their sites to shortleaf. People see it, they drive by. Uh, so when you hold landowner workshops, I think they, they start to maybe get a vision about maybe what they'd like to do. It's still a hard sell, but it's a dialogue that you have to have with a landowner with the right landowner. Mike, this is the key right here. If we're going to be successful is we've got to have uh, financial assistance programs. I think we do a good job with technical assistance. The, the, the funding is the limited capacity. You know, we're funding easements, we're funding these large landscape scale projects, but what we need is we need money for practices on the ground in a sustainable way. So in our state, EQIP has a practice for shortleaf, but we get $20 million in EQIP in our state, $2 million goes to forestry, $1 million to longleaf. So, and most of that money goes to burning. We do have a state cost share assistance forest development program, but again, ours is limited to, we have about $2 million uh, and we pay 60% for planting longleaf and shortleaf. So we just need some more funding sources for practices on the ground. Um, you know, when I look at what is our big success story, uh, for me, I think it's, we're able, we're fortunate as a state agency to maintain our capacity, um, not losing people. We're fortunate to be able to leverage our program funding, 
our FM funding, our stewardship funding to send people to workshops, to meetings, our field foresters, people who are writing the prescriptions, people who are talking one-on-one -on -one to landowners and encouraging them to attend meetings and learn more about it. So the picture on the left is from our state forest, Tuttle Educational State Forest. It's a spray burn and plant. And the picture on the right is we have regional service forester meetings and we try to go out, you know, half a day or one day and look at sites, success stories and things that are different than their traditional management to get people talking. So, you know, when I look at our success stories, it's probably because our partnerships and our investment in our people, really professional development that we can send our folks uh, and have them an educational opportunity to learn more about uh, alternative management species and practices and let them promote it one-on-one -on -one at the ground level with the landowners so that they're educated, they can educate the landowners and hopefully let them make the proper choice for their site. So I'm not here to take credit for our agency, uh, but we have been really rewarded, I think, by our participation with not only Longleaf Initiative, but the Shortleaf Initiative because they're, they're definitely two different type of initiatives. Um, and we've been really, really rewarded, I think, by our efforts and our participation. So.